Hello. And welcome to another episode of uh, Cougar's Violin Corner. Your source for premier violin tips from a guy who uh, is going to be good at violin soon. So, I mean, I'd take lessons from me. I might be giving you the wrong advice and sometimes, but I won't try to. Here's the deal. Uh, I went over to a music store that will name, possibly, once I'm finished with my private investigation. But, talk to a violin teacher. He says, you can see I did this to my bow because of my violin playing. I broke a bunch of the strings on it, and so, or hairs, or whatever you want to call them, and they, uh, so I went into the music store and I asked the guy, hey, I need to get a new violin bow. I need to restring it. And he's like, oh, yeah. We got to order 500 pounds at a time from Lithuania or some country like that. You know, like a llama that uh, they specifically breed to grow its hair out for violin strings. This was what was told to me. I had to buy a new bow for like 45 bucks. Because you can only get, you can't just restring a violin. And you guys said, you guys said, oh, you gotta take this thing out of here, and then this thing out of there. And it takes you at least a hundred tries to get it right. I'm looking at him and I'm like, I doubt it. You know, I'm Ryan Kruger. Pretty sure I can handle it. But uh, you know, I, I, I trusted the guy. I said, okay, fine, it's forty bucks. I mean, what's it gonna be? At least twelve bucks for strings, anyway. So it's thirty bucks just to see. Guess what? Pretty sure he's lying about the whole thing. So, because they took a look at this, the strings look like nylon. You know, like they're from some llama. At, at, at best, it'd be like my kid's mom's hair, which is all stringy and stuff. You know, like maybe she cut some out and made a bow out of it. That's why it breaks so much, because she needs to start using a mousse of provitamin. Um, but at any rate, uh, you know, like me, uh, you can't, not everybody can have this kind of shine and sheen and luster. In their hair. Uh, I can't really expect that from everybody. But I digress. Uh, I wouldn't want to use my hair for violin. I'd, I'd much rather use my kid's mom's. At any rate. Uh, kind of went off the subject there. But violin stuff. That's right. Uh, so, yeah. So, <clears throat> we're a couple things. Okay, so I went in the violin store. And one of the good things the guy did for me is he found where the notes are. And he stuck a little this uh, tape on here. And now I know where to put my fingers. Great news, because uh, I, I was not making it sound very good at all. My initial lesson where I said, just mess around, I'm standing by that. Just mess around with it. But also, maybe within a couple days, get some of these on there. Try it on your own. See if you've just got the touch. But then if you don't, like me, you need a little help, there's a guide for you. And, and this is first position. You got, I don't know, three, five hand positions? I think three. They call it first position. It's where your hand's like at the top, and this is supposedly that, I guess. Like, you get in a, the guy was like, "Oh, you're not gonna be able to use your pinky." Well, of course I am, because I'm Ryan Kruger. Uh, so he was like, "Do you want just three lines?" I was like, "Oh no, I need all four. And I would suggest you do the same thing. Don't listen to anybody that tells you you can't use your pinky. Like, practice it. You'll get you'll get better at it. Uh, but yeah, as far as as far as where to put your fingers. This is only this is like your major scale, kind of like on your guitar, like like you got your half notes and your full notes, and you got like some kind of note in here, right? But here we're taking up a full step. There's another step, so we're skipping, and then it's a half note, so it's kind of the major scale. I know I didn't explain that right. Just mess around with it, and you'll you will see what I'm talking about. Be like, hey, can you put the major scale from first position on my violin? Let's see if the guy will do it for you. Guy did it for free at the music store for me. Although it did come with some expensive advice, a $45 bow, which I'm not really upset that I bought. Now I have two bows. If I can learn to just hold my violin with my chin like this and not have to use the other hand, then I can just play open notes like two at a time, double fist in it. You know what I'm saying? Like two bows. Woo! Imagine the intensity of that song. Wow, that's going to be a good one. All right. And what else I can tell you about? Oh, I got a chin rest. 17 bucks. I don't know if I really needed it, but it does kind of help. It brings the violin up just that little bit. So it's not sitting way down, 
you know, this, this thing kind of rests on your shoulder there, and then now I got something to prop the violin with. I don't like the, how it feels. I think I put it on backwards because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I don't take instruction well. I don't listen when people talk. So then I have to figure it out by myself, <laughs> and I don't like looking it up. Don't be like me. But get your advice from me, definitely. Okay. I think that was it. Um, I'll let you know how it goes. I'm going to go buy some fishing wire, although I did find some violin string for like 15 bucks online. But I'm just going to try to do a fishing line. That's what the freaking rosin's for, you know? Why give me the rosin if I have to... If I have to... The rosin's supposed to create friction. It should work with nylon strings, right? It would probably work with nose hair if you could grow it out long enough. Mine, it, it has like a, a terminal velocity. Like it won't, it won't keep dropping. It'll get to like sitting right out here. If somebody genetically had... The ability to just keep that growing. I think that nose hairs are probably the strongest thing to make violin strings. No one's going to subscribe to this. I'm like the worst teacher of all time. Um, keep practicing. Keep your chin up. Grow your nose hair. Cougar out. <laughs>